Let's talk about these things. Whether you're just starting out or you're looking to upgrade, when you're recording music, you can't get around dealing with getting a new computer at some point. Some of you know plenty, others don't know anything about the topic. Either way, I'm here to help. You may be asking yourself, who am I to talk about this? Well, in addition to my work in music, I have experience in tech retail, so I have a lot of hands-on experience with a lot of devices. While my general advice is for laptops, it also works for tower and mini PCs just the same. You may also want to check what you already have and check my recommendations against the hardware in your system. Firstly, you need to figure out your needs. Are you just recording yourself in your bedroom or are you building orchestral arrangements? What kind of software are you using? What kind of hardware? Certain DAWs like Luna, Logic, and GarageBand only work on Mac. There may be Windows exclusive, but I can't think of any. Add them in the comments if you have one. Always make sure the software you have is compatible with the device you're getting. In terms of interfaces, USB interfaces are still the most common and should work with pretty much every device. But there's legacy interfaces still around that you may need adapters for. Thunderbolt interfaces are also getting popular, and they require a special connection. I have one in my studio here. Even if you are currently using the USB interface, it might be worth buying a system that supports Thunderbolt just in case you want to upgrade. Thunderbolt also supports a lot of nice-to-haves like second displays. With a ground rule set, let's start with you singer-songwriters. If all you do is record two or three audio tracks, you don't need a lot of power. A bit of headroom is nice as your needs may change, but don't fret if you don't have a budget. I started on Acer Aspire with a Pentium processor and four gigabytes of RAM about 15 years ago and was plenty for my needs at the time, although I wouldn't recommend it these days. You may have heard the terms AMD and Intel and Ryzen some number or I some number. To oversimplify it grossly, any of these will suffice. Still, there's some stuff you should know. Celeron, Pentium, and Athlon processors are low cost options that might be attractive due to aggressive pricing, but I wouldn't recommend any of them. They're simply not powerful enough. You may say, well, that's all my budget allows for. Don't worry, I have something at the end of the video specifically for you. Both brands have a line of chips that are numbered according to performance. For Intel, that's i3, i5, i7, and i9. In general, the higher the number, the better. In laptops, it gets a little complicated because there's multiple SKUs of the same chip which have different performance characteristics. Something like a U chip, so a U suffix at the end of the chip number, identifies a power saving option, which I wouldn't recommend. Since 2020, Apple also started using its own line of chips, which are completely separate. Any of these chips will suffice, though if you're not going with Apple, I'd recommend getting at least an i5 or similar or better. The next major component is RAM. It's basically fast storage your processor needs. These days, most systems start with four gigabytes of RAM and it doubles from there. You can find 12 and 24 gigabyte variants, but those are unusual and are often aftermarket upgrades. Eight gigabytes of RAM should suffice for your use case, though I'd recommend getting 16 if the budget allows. Your last major component is storage. While it's the norm these days, it doesn't hurt to mention to always get SSD storage. Usually, the minimum configuration is 256 gigabytes, which you can get by with in a pinch, but 512 gigabytes is more advisable. If you want to work with video, it's also not a bad idea to look for a system with a discrete graphics card. AMD, Intel, and NVIDIA are the manufacturers here, though NVIDIA is by far the most common in laptops. Something small like a 3050 works for you. Don't lose sleep over it if you don't have the budget. The graphics that are included on the processor should handle light video work. Any of the modern Apple Silicon variants is plenty powerful enough for you. So with that in mind, here are four recommendations I found while looking online. First, we have the Asus. That's pretty much the minimum I would recommend. The next up, we have the Lenovo. It has 16 gigs of RAM. Otherwise, it's pretty standard. Next is the Acer. It has Thunderbolt support and a graphics card. And lastly, we have the MacBook Air. I've added 16 gigabytes of RAM and 512 gigabytes of storage. I would recommend it, but you can go lower if you like. These are by no means specific recommendations. Each retailer often gets a separate model number for essentially the same device to avoid price matching requests. These are just four tiers of devices I'd be looking at. Next, for those of you that want to record demos or even finished songs for you and your band. The 
same rules still apply, but we're looking at some general upgrades now. You can still work with an i5 and 8 gigabytes of RAM, but you will hit certain workflow limits, like having to print the more intensive plugins before continuing with your mix. I know this because that's what I had to do when I started recording in this space. That's the system I had. An upgrade was really needed. Particularly if you're looking at systems that include a graphics card, you're probably finding a lot of gaming laptops now. In many ways, these are great for your workflow, with one major downside. Noise. That's not to say other devices can't be noisy. My MacBook's going off behind me right now. But it is more common in gaming laptops. I'd recommend either checking them out in a store or at least reading user reviews to check for complaints of high noise in everyday use. If you're looking at Macs, it gets a little complicated now. Most of these guides would tell you to get a MacBook Pro, which isn't a bad idea, but an M2 MacBook Air could go a long way. It might not be cheaper though, depending on current deals, as the MacBook Pro starts with a higher spec. With that in mind, here are some of my recommendations for you. First, we have the Razer. This is a gaming laptop with more performance and a better graphics card than the Acer, but you have to check on noise. I know Razer is okay, but I don't know about this one specifically. Next, we have the MacBook. You can also use the MacBook Air, the Acer, and the Lenovo I recommended earlier. These are just some examples. Now for those of you dealing with a lot of virtual instruments. For you, the motto is the more the merrier. You may have figured out that it essentially boils down to higher number equals better. An i7 now becomes minimum spec and grab all the RAM you can get. Also consider a terabyte of storage as you'll need a lot of storage for those virtual instruments. On the Mac side of things, a MacBook Pro now becomes a minimum requirement. Here's my sample collection for you. This is a pretty powerful ASUS from the Creator series. I think this should serve you very well. You can always go higher in spec here. Then we have the MacBook, same deal. You can always go higher in spec. In a pinch, the Razer and the earlier MacBook will also work for you. I hear you. You're asking, where's the budget-friendly option you promised? Well, here it is find used or old stock. The audio world tends to move quite slowly anyway, so new and shiny isn't a must. I got my MacBook Pro when the M1 devices came out, and I got a great deal on it. Do I regret not buying the better M1 devices? No, it does everything I needed to do and should serve me well into the future. The best deals can probably be found with private sellers, but they come at a risk. If you don't want to incur those risks, there's still plenty of good options for you. Starting with Apple. They have a whole section on their website dedicated to refurbished devices. There's also a plethora of websites that are selling refurbished devices with a pretty robust warranty. The only thing to watch out for here is the pricing. Sometimes their pricing doesn't make sense, so always compare to new devices. Over on the Windows side of things, these same websites have a load of enterprise devices from Lenovo and the like. While you have to check their age, as anything older than 8th gen Intel or 3rd gen Ryzen, does not support Windows 11, they're usually cheap and a great value. If you want new in box, there's also options for you. Particularly when changeovers happen, like with the M3 MacBook Pro, there's a load of old stock, like the M2 MacBook Pros around, and you might get a deal as retailers are trying to get rid of that stock. This does not work as well with other manufacturers, as they usually sell a wide range of devices under the same moniker, like Acer Aspire. But you might still get lucky at a brick and mortar retail store with a clearance section. As a bonus, find used is great for the environment as these devices don't end up in a landfill and no new resources are used to create new stock. What's your setup? Let me know in the comments.